Hey everybody, Sean James here. Welcome back to the cabin. Windy day out today, but uh, nice day near the end of August. I've been going through a lot of your comments and I keep getting questions about you know, people that want to start up this kind of lifestyle and they're frustrated because they just don't even know where to be begin. They're working in a kind of a dead-end job or a job they don't like to do and just can't see a way forward, can't see a way to turn the life around and end up doing what they really want to do with their life and to become more self-reliant. And I remember what it was like to be early 20s and not having uh, the resources to just go out and do what I want or go down that path. In fact, you, you know that I built a cabin when I was my early 20s, 21, and tried to live in it and ended up having to come out because I couldn't even afford the taxes. Well, I didn't realize at the time that so many people in that area, being a remo remote area, needed help working on cottages and stuff like that. So I could have found uh, labor work to do, uh, construction work. I could have, um, uh, well, in this day and age, I could have done things like photography and, and videography, YouTube, uh, blogging and vlogging and writing articles if I could write, which I've learned to write since then and end up uh, writing for Ontario Tourism and some other magazines. So a whole bunch of different ways you can earn ec extra income. But if you're working in a decent job or you're taking a trade or working in construction or or any kind of work that that's paying the bills and it's only occupying maybe eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, to spend that extra time that you have each day, each week, maybe even the weekends, doing something else that brings in some extra income that you could put aside, set aside specifically uh, to follow that dream and to apply it to what you really want to do with your life. So if that's saving that money up so you can buy a piece of land or or buy a van that you want to uh, set up so you can travel across the uh, country, build a, a tiny home. So many things that you can do that allow you to live a more free lifestyle. And especially, uh, I know specifically from my own uh, path is that I would like to do stuff in the outdoors. So, so many things that I'm doing now that earn a little bit of income that adds up and allows me to live this lifestyle. So really it's about capitalizing on those extra hours each week and, and, um, and not getting too greedy and not uh, being impatient because it does take a long time when you're only getting these small hits of money to accumulate enough to apply to what you really want to do. If you want to buy a piece of property, for example, like the one I bought, it was $50,000. Well, you don't just raise that in a week legally. So that means setting aside maybe an extra thousand dollars a week. Maybe it takes you 50 weeks. Maybe it takes you two, three, four, five years even to acquire enough extra money to buy that piece of property. Maybe it takes you 15 years. But I tell you, at my age, I know looking back that if I had been more patient and taken the easy path instead of putting it all on the line and taking those bigger risks, hoping for a bigger reward, I'd be further ahead than I am now. I would have been able to achieve my dreams a little bit faster. So like I said, if I was 20, 25, I'd be pounding away, doing a little bit extra work and putting that money aside and acquiring those things I need to live that more self-reliant lifestyle one piece at a time. So 15 years later, you can quit that job that you don't like and move your family to the place that you really want to live in and just uh, follow your dreams, follow the path that you were meant to be on. So think about all the ways that you can do that. Just think of the things that are in your life, the things that you're good at that you might be able to capitalize on. You might be able to make a little bit of extra money from. And uh, everybody has things that they're good at. And if you don't know what that is yet, then keep trying different things until you find out what it is. And then focus on that thing. Don't try to learn the things that you're not good at. I like to play guitar and banjo. I played the, uh, took lessons from about seven years old till about 14 or 15 years old. Never got great because it wasn't my passion. I like playing and I wish I was better now, but I wasn't good at it. So I wasn't going to follow that path and think I was going to become a musician. So instead I focused on the things I really like to do. Now at the time that was outdoor stuff, hunting and fishing and even hockey when I was younger. Those things that never really had the potential to turn into something at that time that I could live off of, that I could monetize and earn a living at, but now I can. Now I realize I could have even then. And this in this day and age, you can monetize that type of stuff. So I could have been doing guiding, for example, hunting and fishing guiding, or uh, now hiking and photography guides are, are popular, uh, kayaking and, and canoeing and things like that. So there's all kinds of, kinds of ways to monetize your, 
your living and you might not make as much money doing those things but if it's extra on top of the job that you already have that's making earning you more money then maybe it's enough maybe that's it maybe that's as far as you ever want to go with it because you're satisfied with living a regular nine to five lifestyle and then having this extra time that you can spend in the outdoors because it's being paid for through your monetization of that hobby so one of the things I did when I was younger is that I went out and I just had this opportunity that came around in construction where I was able to pick up an old used piece of equipment that was very expensive piece of equipment when it was new and it ended up costing me $18,000. I had to go and get a loan from the bank, uh, bought this piece of equipment and started renting it out and then, and then hired a, a man to uh, run that piece of equipment. And eventually my wife ran that business as a side business. And we made, from that $18,000 investment, we made about $35,000 in that first year and then paid it off, put the extra money in, the, in our pockets, bought a little bit more supporting equipment for that, that piece of equipment. And then the following year, we made $50,000. The year after that, we made about $100,000. So that was really the catalyst. That's really where I started to learn how to leverage um, sort, of pass, sort of passive income little bit of hands-on stuff so not just throwing money in a stock market for example and gambling but to find an opportunity work at it maneuver things around so that it could work and that it could make enough money extra money because it allowed me to continue working at the job that was making well it was paying for my bills I had kids at the time I had two kids and a house and a wife to pay for so it was a risk it was a real gamble for me but by taking that sort of calculated risk yet not giving up my my full-time job wasn't really putting my family at risk so look for those opportunities and find a way to monetize something that you know a little bit about that doesn't take a lot of your time but it's additional to what your your uh, regular standard job is so the reason that piece of equipment was available is the guy that owned it was getting older and i had actually called him up as i was managing a construction firm I called him up asking if he could come out and do a job for me with that piece of equipment he said you know what I don't want to be in this industry anymore I'm retiring and uh, I'd ra rather just sell this piece of equipment so I ended up buying it there's lots of businesses lots of uh, businessmen or business women that are at a point where they're uh, getting ready to get offload their their company or their uh, customers or their equipment and uh, their their uh, succession plan is not in place their their family is not interested in taking over that business so you can get some real deals there and if you're in the right place at the right time it can change your life you know you never know where you're going to find these kind of opportunities either so check check the papers check kijiji look on facebook marketplace even now uh, there's a number of uh, websites that specialize in in selling businesses for for other uh, clients that come to them trying to sell their businesses so lots of places to find that maybe it's a piece of equipment that you see for sale another thing that's changed um, in this day and age is uh, people monetizing whatever uh, equipment or or house they have or rooms and things like that so think of uber and uh, people renting out trailers and boats and things like that that uh, or actually if they have a cottage or second home or they have an extra room in their house by renting those things out they're able to bring in money when that piece of equipment or that real estate sitting idle that's a real push i think that's going to be one of the revolutions in this um, in the next decades is it's going to be less and less ownership people will have to start sharing the cost of everything because i know when i bought my first house my wife we only paid ninety nine thousand for it i was making sixty thousand dollars a year and she was making thirty or forty thousand dollars a year the wages today for young people are not much higher than that if at all if they can even find jobs at that yet the housing prices i well i know that house for example last time i saw it sell maybe 10 years ago it sold for over two hundred and thirty thousand dollars i think it was so that is way out of reach considering the amount of money uh, you're currently earning so you so shared accommodations are going to become a lot more popular or a lot more necessary so if you're able to pool your resources and buy a place or you're in a position where you find a good deal on real estate and you can buy it and then rent out rooms one room at a time i know one of my employees did that bought a decent sized house uh, created a whole bunch of rooms in there and ran a rooming house he ended up paying that house off and then he was able to buy another house that he could move into with his family so 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 many ways if you're creative to get take those first steps to uh, a future of self-reliance it might not be immediate but working hard and smart is uh is the ticket there's no 
lottery win here that you have to work at it. And that's one of the ways to do it, leveraging your opportunities. So that's my tip for you if you're trying to become more self-reliant. Thanks for watching this video, I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you up here at the cabin next time. Take care.